All right, guys, welcome back. So we're taking a look at a quantum stock, QBTC, which was up on Friday 42%. Everybody was pretty much um, looking at this name and maybe if you were trading it, but closed somewhere around $10.20. So what I'm watching from here, so anything I'm gonna talk about in general in this channel from option traders perspective. If you don't understand option market, you don't understand the market as a whole, okay? So whether you are trading a blue chip, large cap stocks, if you are looking at the overall market right now where we have a correction 10% and you're not able to read the flows or you don't understand the option market, you're missing a freaking giant uh, big picture, okay? So you're missing almost like 60, 70% of the underlying of what's going on as a whole in the market. So same situation with these small caps. And every time I talked about like um, Soundhound, Big Bear, I kept bringing option activity because this is what has been driving these stocks, okay? We know next week Nvidia has a big event, uh, which is robotics, uh, AI, and then uh, Thursday, I think, Quantum. And I have talked about the Rigetti previous video that I talked about. But the reason why I said on that video the QBTC D wave uh, looking a bit attractive to me as a trader, and I I told that without looking at the option market. But after looking option at option uh, market, well I can see why this stock has traded with such significant volume on Friday, which was the highest uh, volume than any of these hype moves that it had. Okay, so this stock's market capitalization 2.7 billion outstanding shares for the stock around like 200 300 million let's take a look so it didn't have too much of a outstanding share i mean it's decent but qbts on friday 42 percent move happened thanks to the option activity and thanks to the shorts getting squeezed and most importantly option traders okay thanks to options traders so I'll show you the flows. You keep an eye on those. I'm not telling you to buy or sell. Uh, these are videos are purely for entertainment purposes only. So let's dive into the options before we talk about the potential price levels, okay? Even though I'm gonna label it on th thumbnail 1315, but let's take a look at it from options uh, perspective. So if you take a look at Friday's stats, 373,000 calls traded, 178,000 puts traded, and you can see by looking at the orders where they were executed, executed, 36% uh, of the calls were purchased at the asking price, which means they were buying. And if you take a look at the deltas, uh, you can see the higher delta means, well, people were buying probably closer to the money calls. And if you take a look at the puts that were being sold, uh, and you can see like low deltas, which means far outside of the money puts were being sold, 34, 35%, basically like 70% of the puts. So, which means bullish option activity, okay? And then we dive into the orders by sorting out the orders that came in. And I'll show you guys what you guys did. Maybe if you were, I mean, if you did trade it, yeah, just comment below. You guys, most of you, tried to trade outside of the money, something like $9, $9.50, $10. You can see the volume, okay? So before that volume was very low, 15,000, 12,000, 13,000 expiring next week, okay? That's what most retail traded. But smart money, I'm not gonna call them smart, but again, they have been playing this game where I, I know these guys' footprint, okay? I have seen it more and more and I, I know. I don't know who they are as a firm, but I know it's freaking couple hedge funds that they're doing this. Uh, and again, I'm just guessing, okay? So I'm not pointing fingers to anybody, but you can see the $7 call, okay? Look at the open interest. It didn't trade much that particular day, 4,000, but 35,000 open interest was sitting. And then pay attention to the $5 strike price which came in literally like three, four, five minutes before market close on Friday. These are like 10, 15 million dollar orders, okay? These like no retail does that, okay? So, but first I'm gonna show you the $7 call. When they started accumulating and you can see on this chart, this is a daily chart of that particular $7 strike, 
which is expiring March 21st. Look where they buy. They start buying, accumulating, okay? They start accumulating at these like 30 cents, 30, 30 28, 30, 23, 25, at these levels, okay? Like 30,000 contracts. And then they buy somewhere right here, uh, right around earnings, and then after earnings, they buy more, and then Friday, they have more. But you get the point. Maybe Friday they sold it actually, 4,000. Maybe they trimmed it. We will have to test it. Uh, we will have to come back and take a look at it when probably they started taking profit into here. I, I'm going to guess that they started taking profit here after this move started happening. We have to ke come take a look at the Monday, how open interest is going to change. If that 34,000 gets reduced to say like 29, 28, I will consider them start trimming because you can see where they started buying, okay? And then another shenanigan and deep in the money. And I know these guys, I mean, I have seen them do that a lot, especially when stocks sitting right next to its all time highs. They will get the stock over the resistance and make everyone excited and pretty much dump their shares. I'm gonna show you the shares as well when they started accumulating. So you can see last like 10 minutes, they buy deep in the money $5 strikes, which probably will cause uh, market makers pretty much buy, hedge themselves because these, are, these contracts are being sold by market makers. And the way they hedge their upside, one way of their hedging upside is they just have to buy shares, okay? So once they buy shares, uh, and as soon as these guys start taking profit, they will have to sell the shares and basically uh, neutralize the risk. So basically they have to remain neutral market makers. And I have seen these guys do it. Like they usually come in a little bit earlier, 11, 11.30, 12, and then they pretty much start dumping next day. So you have to keep an eye on these two strikes open interest going into that Thursday, okay? So, and if you are somebody who is like, I get this a lot. I, I'm not. I have been not been uh, talking about stocks and in general trading stocks. <laughs> uh, we have been talking it for quite some time. And common sections of my past videos are proof where somebody comes in, buys the freaking top, and then makes all kinds of stupid excuses, saying, "Oh, it's it's such a good company. Uh, they're doing that. They're doing that," and, and they just fall into freaking back holders when that stock pretty much reverses right back down to where it came from. So if you are that guy, I mean, you have to have a plan. If you are buying this stock, let's say at 11, 12, what's the plan? Like you have to like make a plan. I'm just mentioning it way early. Again, I'm not telling you what to do, but I have seen it so often where people just top ticket and then stock flushes down when these flows, which are expiring in one week, one way or another, they're going to exit, whether they're going to execute or whether they're going to sell it. Most likely, they're going to sell it. That's what they have been do doing. And you will, I mean, some people, I'm not saying you particularly, but don't take it personally at all, but some people will, will end up holding the bag when this stock reverses. And I have not a single doubt about these quantum names reversing after the event and going much lower going into like May, let's say April, June, they will trade much lower levels than they are because they don't worth that much, okay? They, these companies don't worth like three, four, five billion, whatever the valuation they're trading. But let's jump into the stock chart, okay? So again, you do your thing, but my point is you have to have a plan when you're trading. If you came into the stock with the idea of trading it, let's say some people come in, just finish this let me finish <laughs> 11 dollar, and they have an idea of selling at 13 15 14 but stock doesn't go that high people set like also round number targets and they're like oh okay if it hits 15 then i'm gonna sell well if everybody thinks that it's gonna i mean you everybody if everybody thinks that they're gonna sell at 15 well, all those guys who loaded it, they're going to sell it way early. They will dump it and it will just touch that 15 or maybe even don't touch it and they're just flushed back down to 10 and it'll just come, keep coming down. So again, can it keep squeezing? Sure. Why it pop popped? Well, here's another thing. So I keep an eye on short volume and short uh, borrowing interest. So basically on Friday, nobody could borrow this stock to short. 
So anybody who wanted to short, they couldn't short it because there were no shares available to short. So the stock just kept melting higher. So that's number one. Number two, so then the most important one, look at the shares where the, uh, again, this is volume leaders. Again, I'm not advertising it, but I like it. So it's, it's, it's pretty expensive, it's 80 bucks a month. So not my software, but I love it. So they show me the largest order where they came in, dates, I can take a look at the clusters, and what I noticed is in the $5, $5.50, $6.30, $6.40, levels, look at the accumulation though. I think these people were buying it very recently. Uh, March 10th, March 12th, March 13th, uh, February 25th, March 12th. This is where they loaded the bag right here. Guess what? Do you think these guys are gonna hold it? Of course not. They're gonna. If these guys are double their money, if somebody put a uh, accumulated 127 million dollar position in a small cap, where overall market, I mean Russell 2000, almost in a at a point where it may fall into bear market, do you think they don't? They won't sell it when they have 100 percent realized gain? Of course they will. But my point is, it might have a gas in the tank. I'm watching for a breakout and my target somewhere around like 12 maybe 13 and it can go higher it can go 15 possible maybe maybe even can go to 20 but again i'm realistic so as soon as that event is over on thursday this will be already rolling over and again i'm bullish up until the option expiration and if i'm late if i'm not able to capitalize on this move i will be just keeping an eye on those option activity and then I'll be looking into some maybe reversals because there are many stocks like Rigetti or GTI, um, IonQ that are way below their highs and any relief bounds, I mean, guess what? There are a lot of back holders right here. They will start selling, they will put a pressure. But after that event, of course, I'm not, I'm not watching all of them to the upside. I'm not interested to short. I don't like to front run, I like to go buy relative i mean i like to go puts on let's say if i want to buy puts on relatively weak names like let's say if i wanted to short i on q well i would wait somewhere right here for the weakness and we did it in this quarter we we're talking about it i was just going in and out because it was clearly reversing this is when i will go maybe trade it but again i have seen these sorts of flows come in do the same thing right around here at ten dollar twenty dollar level i have seen these kind of flows bbai they have done this right around here and as soon as volume starts going lower stock starts going lower and they have done it here too i mean i have seen it and i'm pretty sure i have even showed it here in this channel to many people how those flows were coming in deep in the money and then dumping it and then most of the people get attracted right around here at the top and just, you can just see the, the volume so the fact that this stock uh, QBTS traded with the highest ever volume actually that particular day telling me that yeah might you might have a couple more days but then um, it, it will just trap start trapping people so that's my take this is not a buy or sell recommendation i'm not telling you to sell your stock if you are in love with the stock please marry the stock yeah hold it forever but i'm not saying you to uh, buy or sell i'm not telling you this is a financial recommendation i'm a random guy on youtube i have been wrong many many times and i can be wrong 100 percent of the time this time around with the stock as well but again, this is just my opinion. This is what I'm looking at. And I'm risking with my own money, actually. So, But I don't have a position in the stock. I'm not trading it long. I'm not trading it short. But I'm watching for possible breakout right here. And if it does, 13, 14, 15, those are the RAS I'm watching for QBTC, D-Wave stock quantum. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe if you did. And see you in the next one. Peace.